Let's use implicit differentiation to find dy dx, y prime, of x cubed plus y to the third equals 6xy. This equation is actually known as the Fulham of Descartes and looks like this graph over here. So you can see it's, it's not actually a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. But it is an expression in terms of x and y that's differentiable. And we can find a dy dx derivative for this expression. So the first thing we need to do is take the derivative in terms of x of both sides of this equation. So if we're trying to take the derivative of x cubed plus y cubed, we know that this plus sign means we can take each of these derivatives separately. The derivative of x cubed in terms of x is just the straightforward power rule 3x squared. When we go to take the derivative of y cubed, we need to use the chain rule because we're going to think of y as depending on x. So y here is, our, is like our inside function. We're going to have 3y squared, that's the derivative of the outside with the inside plugged in, times the derivative of the inside here, the derivative of y with respect to x. Now let's take the derivative of the right side of this equation. So the derivative in terms of x of 6xy, this side we're going to need to use a product rule because we have 6x, which is an expression depending on x, and we have y, which is also an expression depending on x. So using the product rule, we're going to get the derivative of 6x in terms of x is just 6. We keep the y unchanged plus, now we keep the 6x unchanged, the derivative of y in terms of x is just the derivative of y in terms of x, dy dx. Now we need to take this expression and solve it for dy dx. This is just straightforward algebra, but sometimes it's a little bit complicated. So let's look at this algebra of solving for dy dx. The first thing is to think of dy dx as its own variable. So this is an equation that has three variables, x, y, and dy dx. dy dx is the one that we care about. So the first thing we want to do is move all the terms that have a dy dx in it to the same side. So let's move all the dy dx's to the left side. That means we would have the 3y squared that we'll keep over here and we're going to move this 6x dy dx over to the left side by just subtracting it from both sides of the equation. That means on the right side we keep the 6y, but we need to move this 3x squared over to the right side by subtracting it from both sides of the equation. Now we have a ddx in every term on the left side of the equation. That means we can factor it out front. So we have dy dx times 3y squared minus 6x equals 6y minus 3x squared. Now that we have dy dx times something, we can take this term here and divide both sides by that term, moving it over here to this side. So we're going to end up with dy dx equals 6y minus 3x squared divided by 3y squared minus 6x. Now notice this does not look like our usual equation for dy dx. Usually our dy dx only depends on x, but when we're doing implicit differentiation, we should not expect that. If we only knew x, we wouldn't actually know which point of the curve we were on because there's two points of the curve for this particular value of x and for other values of x as well because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Therefore, to specify a specific point on the curve of, say, this Poilum of Descartes, we actually need to know both x and y. Now this does present a problem because we can't just plug in any x and y because that wouldn't make any sense. You have to pick a point x, y 
that's actually on the curve. So like I said, back here for this value of x, you could plug in this point or this point, but it wouldn't make any sense to plug in this one because that's not on the curve. It wouldn't give you information about the slope of the tangent line for this curve in any way. But this right here is our final answer for dy dx using implicit differentiation.